Stellantis, one of the world's largest automotive companies, is making strides towards becoming carbon neutral by 2038. The company is testing 28 of its engine families to determine if they can run on synthetic fuels or e-fuels. The testing protocol includes both petrol and diesel powertrains, spanning engine families from 2014 through to 2029. And for those of you who don't know who Stellantis is and what they do, um, they basically build engines for some of the biggest manufacturers out there. So yeah, they're kind of big and they make a lot of engines. Now, the reason for these tests is that if they can make it work, e-fuels will allow owners of combustion-powered vehicles the option to decarbonize their vehicle without needing to replace it with an electric vehicle or by needing to upgrade the fuel system. This program will allow the company to reduce CO2 emissions by up to 400 million tons from 2025 through to 2050. Stellantis has built 28 million combustion-powered vehicles in Europe since 2014, and those vehicles can't all just be crushed. Building new vehicles also produce tons of really bad emissions, so we need to find ways to improve our current transport, and this move could greatly reduce their carbon footprint. Stellantis CEO Carlos Tavares said, We are doubling down on our fight against global warming by testing carbon-neutral fuel as a complementary solution to our holistic decarbonization approach. While we remain steadfast in executing our aggressive electrification strategy, we must also find smart alternatives to address the CO2 emissions for the 1.3 billion existing internal combustion engine cars. By working to make sure our Stellantis engines are e-fuel friendly, we are aiming at giving our customers another tool in the fight against global warming and one that can have an almost immediate impact. It is also another action we are taking that is well aligned with our commitment to be carbon neutral by 2038. Stellantis' e-fuel program is an important step towards reducing emissions and achieving carbon neutrality. The company has already confirmed that it will only sell new battery electric passenger vehicles in Europe by the end of this decade. However, there are still millions of combustion-powered vehicles on the road that will continue to emit CO2 for years to come. E-fueled engines could be a viable solution for reducing emissions from these vehicles, providing an almost immediate impact in the fight against global warming. And here is the thing most people don't think of. We have over a billion cars on our planet already, most of which is internal combustion engine powered. So the fastest and most effective way to reduce our carbon footprint would be to lower the emissions of those cars. Lowering the emissions on new cars helps, but that's just a fraction of the total cars on our roads. Now as part of its testing process, Stellantis is analyzing tailpipe emissions, startability, engine power, reliability, oil dilution, and the fuel tank, fuel lines, and filters of its existing engine families. This is a rigorous testing protocol that ensures e-fueled engines meet the same performance standards as their traditional counterparts. You see, the idea with e-fuels is that your car would drive exactly the same. Same power, same reliability, same everything, just a different fuel. This announcement from Stellatus comes shortly after the European Union said it would permit the sale of new combustion-powered vehicles after 2035 as long as they run solely on synthetic fuels. This move by the EU further underscores the importance of e-fuels in the transition toward a greener transportation sector. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go and watch this video. And if you are interested in any other fuel-related videos, go through my channel. We talk about many different possible fuel solutions that can power our future. In conclusion, if Stellantis finds success with these tests, most of the cars on our road can switch over to these fuels, which will dramatically reduce CO2. And as a bonus, I will still be able to drive my internal combustion-powered, turbo-fed, noisy machines. But let me know what you think down below. Do you agree with the plan they are following? Do you disagree? I would love to know what all of your opinions are. So let me know. If you like this video, please have a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you did like it, you'll like all of my other stuff. So just go through my channel. See if there's something else you like. I'll check you guys in the next one. Cheers, eh?